So in this video, we are going to discuss the anterolateral approach to knee injections. Some background indications for knee injections include pain control and acute non-fracture knee injury, such as the ACL rupture or patellar tendon ruptures, steroid injections for pain control in knee osteoarthritis. Aspirations can be performed both for diagnostic and therapeutic reasons. There are three main portals to access the knee via injection or aspiration. The anterolateral approach will be discussed in this video. We consider it the easiest for injections in the varus arthritic knees, and we consider it the best portal for aspiration in total knee arthroplasty. The anterior medial approach and superolateral approach are two alternatives. We consider the superolateral approach the best for native knee aspirations. There are several risks of knee injections, such as infection. Uh, there's a standard protocol of waiting at least three months after any injection prior to any arthroplasty procedure in that joint. Risk for cartilage damage from the needle, bleeding, lidocaine toxicity, which is why it's important to aspirate prior to injecting to ensure you are not in a vascular structure, as well as elevated blood glucose following corticosteroid injection specifically. Diabetics should always get a blood glucose check a week following their injection. One should avoid bilateral corticosteroid injections in diabetic patients. It's important to obtain all your supplies prior to performing a knee injection to ensure sterility including 1-2% to lidocaine without epinephrine, Kenalog, or Depomedrol as an alternative, an ethyl chloride topical spray. An alternative includes LMX topical lidocaine cream, one 18-gauge needle, and one 21-23-gauge to 23 gauge needle. The 18-gauge needles are ideal for aspirating lidocaine or when used for aspirating the joint whereas 21 to 23 gauge needles are ideal for injecting into the joint to minimize discomfort. A 10 cc syringe, chloroprep cleaning sticks, as well as a dressing to follow. Appropriate setup includes a patient seated on the edge of the bed with a leg hanging off the ground to provide gravity assistance to expanding the knee joints. Performing appropriate informed consent and a timeout procedure with nursing in the room. Having all your supplies set up next to the patient to prevent delays during the procedure. Once appropriately positioned, mark out the appropriate landmarks using a marking pen, including the inferior, medial, and lateral pole of patella, patellar tendon, tibial tubercle, and your anterolateral soft spot. You can also draw horizontal lines marking your lateral tibial plateau and lateral femoral condyle if you wish. Next, apply the topical ethyl chloride spray for analgesia for the needle injection, and then sterilely prep the intended injection site. Plan your intended trajectory from the anterolateral skin to the intercondylar notch. When injecting, one should feel two losses of resistance, first of the skin and subcutaneous tissue, and second, as you pop through the capsule and you enter the knee joint. If you feel a hard stop, Prior to this, you should adjust the trajectory to either go under the lateral femoral condyle or above the lateral tibial plateau. If you feel a hard stop of bone after these two losses of resistance, you're likely hitting the notch, so you should draw back five millimeters. Aspirate back to ensure you're not endangering any vascular structures, and when injecting, the injection solution should enter without resistance. Post-injection care includes compression of the injection site, a dressing such as anywhere from a band-aid to gauze and tape, and an ace wrap for comfort. Regular icing should be performed the rest of that day into the next. We like to perform mild passive range of motion in the office following injection to circulate the lidocaine within the knee joint. Patients can be weight-bearing as tolerated. They may want to avoid extreme ranges of motion and high impact activities for a few days following the injection. And as previously mentioned, a blood sugar check within a week in diabetics. Here we have a video for the standard anterolateral knee injection. At first, you can mark out your landmarks as shown here. Uh, inferior border of the patella, patellar tendon, as well as tibial tubercle. Just lateral to patellar tendon, you can feel the anterolateral soft spot in the joint line. Below that, you can feel lateral pl tibial plateau, and above, you can feel lateral femoral condyle. Um, positioning for the injection should be at 90 degrees of flexion 
as well as the foot hanging off the ground to allow for gravity distraction of the joint space. Following correct marking of the bony landmarks, the skin can be prepped with cold ethyl chloride spray to provide some analgesia for the injection. Following ethyl chloride spray, the skin is prepped with chloroprep or alcohol swabs. The trajectory from the anterolateral portal into the intercondylar notch is estimated, and then the knee is injected. When entering the knee, one should feel a loss of resistance at the skin, as well as when entering the joint capsule. Once in the knee joint, the injection should enter easily without much resistance. Following injection, pressure is applied and entry point is dressed with a bandage or dressing.